podcast is intended for mature audiences. The views and opinions expressed are those of the panelists and do not reflect in any way those of the podcast partners, sponsors, or affiliates. Enjoy. Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. BoxingVoice.com. All the guys want, I want what Mayweather got. I want what Mayweather got. You didn't bust your ass like Mayweather. I was trying to fight every fight. I sacrificed a lot. To get to where I got to. What, what, what do you bring to the team? Let's get this on. Let's do it. Well, it's like this. It's, 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 no, no, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait. All right, that's it. Hold on. Every, Bernard, everybody calm down. Man, you know how these bitches is in the sport. Total disrespect. Kid has no class, no style at all. I sacrificed a lot. Boxingwoods.com To get to where I got to. Boxingwoods.com Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Boxing Voice Radio. We are back. And uh, we got to discuss Conor McGregor and Paulie Malignaggi. I mean, um, not too long ago, we were speaking to, to Paulie, and uh, we found out that he was going to be sparring Conor yesterday. And that happened. And none other than the notorious one himself leaked the photo. Now, what's interesting about this particular sparring match is the photo that Obviously, Team McGregor decided to leak was one with McGregor's hands behind his back. And and we'll get into the details of that and, and what exactly that means or what we think it means or what was their motive for that particular photo. But before we do that, let's get on out to my co-hosts uh, who have joined me today. I'm going to go out to the Golden State's everyone's favorite hipster. Daladeviasi production. This is a beautiful performance against a very tough guy in Michael Johnson. Johnson. How do you feel about it? Fuck that. Conor McGregor. Boxingwoods.com. You know me, Larry. From a wicked entrance, from a flip over the rock, into a knock out. When the main thing is, I just want the guy. I wish. Boxingwoods.com. Yes, the hipsters here. Haters beware. And uh, Conor McGregor. So, you know, the social media king himself, you know, uh, maybe the prince, you know, Alex Lemon is he's probably the king. And then you got Conor McGregor um, posting, this, posting this amazing photo of uh, his classic hand behind the back, you know, in, you know, homage of Roy Jones, Prince Nassim, uh, Muhammad Ali. You know, he has sort of done this in his fights before and now doing it in a sparring session against Paulie. And uh, I think just because the way, you know, the timing of the photo, it, you know, Polly looks tired in it. McGregor, you know, hands behind his back. It, it looks pretty cool. But uh, does it mean much? I don't know. Can, you know, I, I don't know how much we can uh, take away from a single photo, uh, but cannot wait to chop it up with a uh, Ness and a uh, Superman Steven coming back from the dead wow. again. They say that a photo is worth a thousand words. We'll try and give you at least a million uh, based on this one photo because I have tons of little Easter eggs that we could You're pull from this. A McGregor fan. It's so funny. I'm not a McGregor fan. You're a McGregor I'm a fan. fan of boxing, and I'm covering our sport. If this, for, this, this, this fight wasn't happening in boxing, you know we wouldn't be covering it. But let's get on out to... The uh, home of Superman Stephen Calderon himself, the king of the bay. Hey, what's up, everybody? Glad to be back for another great, amazing show. Good topics we got. Yeah, I'm looking at this picture, and that's you're right. There's a lot of little things that we could nitpick out of here. Uh, for one, I, I'm really trying to figure it looks as though Polly Monaji is in the middle of either throwing a jab or or maybe he just ate one himself and then Connor, like, you know, immediately went to that stance to kind of give him some time to recover. I like to think that it's Paulie in the middle throwing a jab. Um, man, 
this fight's got so much hype around it and they're really doing it the right way. This is the kind of stuff that you kind of wish we would have got back in the day when uh, Mayweather was fighting Pacquiao. You, we wish that we got this kind of hyped about it. We wish it was kind of worth talking about. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of us who I think are going to settle for this just because uh, the, the interest factor. You know, we're really curious to see, you know, how quick uh, Mayweather can, can make mincemeat of this guy. Well, once the picture dropped, now it's about six hours ago since Connor posted it on his uh, social media. And um, once it dropped, obviously everyone retweeted, regrammed, and the picture went viral. On McGregor's Instagram, right, his verified Instagram, he. Last time I checked, it was at about a million likes. 850,000 is uh, what I seen. But let me just go ahead and double check. Just for mm, analytic reasons, right? Analytical reasons. Let's see here. Can we? Oh, man, I got to do it for my phone. Oh, wow. Well, I was wrong. It says 400. I could have sworn I said I seen that thing say 850. Let me see. Hmm. That is odd. Let me check from my phone. That really doesn't make sense. I could have I just checked it, but it doesn't matter. What's interesting about the picture is the size difference. Paulie's face, his eyes seem to be closed. I mean, we can't assume that he was punched, obviously. You know, that he could just be blinking and the camera shutter speed, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think if I had to take a guess, it looks like he's in the middle of throwing a punch. You know, he's got that. His cheeks are kind of puffy. Maybe he's like, exhaling. You could see that his his left hand. He usually keeps it down low, but it's kind of extended out. Paulie would kind of keep his hand closer to him if he had just gotten hit. Paulie's, you know, very well. Uh, you know, Paulie's a, a very experienced boxer. If he got hit, he would know to kind of brings his hand back to a defense position. So this looks to me as though he's going out attacking. Maybe because he knows. Okay, well, if you're gonna do that showboating shit, you know the. You just go back to the fundamental. You throw the jab to the body, and you know that guy's going to have to either cover up or keep himself exposed. Well, speaking of um, fundamentals, and, and, let, and let's just compare the two, right? Because in the press tour, Connor said one time, Matt, he was like, this guy's too little. He's got brittle hands. He's got a little head. He's just too little. His body's too little. So now watching him um, here in comparison to – a two-divisional former champion, McGregor looks very much bigger. You, It feels like you could fit one and a half of Paulie inside of McGregor's body. Um, and, and Paulie is all, you know, out of shape, too. Like, this is, this is yes, not a Paulie that's in blown shape. Up. This is a blown-up Paulie and still looks small compared to McGregor. Let's just compare the lower half, the calf. Look at the calf muscle difference in these two. And then when you go up the quads, and I, I have no clue. Is that going to make a difference? You know, automatically when it comes to Deontay Wilder, the fans say his legs are small and can't take a punch and he needs better legs. So does this mean automatically that Conor McGregor could take a punch because he has these dynamic fucking ham hocks over here? No. Uh, can he take a punch better due to his legs and I, I i have no idea i mean i, I so why do you think science science fans always say oh he's got chicken legs you know like remember when when paul williams just oh he's, his legs are too thin i think that's more of like uh you know over time your legs kind of wilt from the from the pre like going rounds that might make a distant that might make a uh uh that might mean something going into like the later rounds, how much strength your legs have to keep you up. If you're taking those hard punches, you know, if you're bending at the knees so much, you're pivoting so much. If you don't have that good leg strength, um, you, you're, you're going to eventually kind of be worn out over time. I think that's the insinuation. How true that is, I don't really know because I've seen guys some scrawny legs who, who go like, mm, I don't know, who, who are all time like greats. Like you look at Alexis Arguello, that guy had the skinniest legs. Like toothpicks, you know, but he's re regarded as one of the best that ever did it. I think legs uh, probably has more to do with how much power and leverage you're probably able to uh, dish out, if anything, not so much how much you could take a punch. 
And very quickly, Paulie Malignaggi just uh, posted on, I believe it was Twitter. Shout out to uh, Superman Steven for sending the link. Uh, good rounds last night with uh, at Notorious MMA. My code is sparring details. Stay in the gym. Look forward to helping him get ready for 826. Damn. Yo, yo, that must be like a a a a live response to everyone, right? Because you know I text them early, like, yo, send you know me comments. everyone is. You know everyone is. Come on. Yeah, you know, everyone is texting him. So, you know, he 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 he's saying it to everybody it's subliminally, like a mass message, like, yo, them sparring details stay in the room. Cause I said, Paulie, just give me one quote. I just want one quote. Like, damn, I wanted him to be like, yo, he got popped. It's like, oh, shit, McGregor got popped. <laughs> yo, he caught me with a good one. That's, oh, my God, he caught him with a good one. I don't know. But, uh, again, man, those legs, that upper torso, I mean, he just looks so much bigger. Look at that that left arm. That back that, arm ain't no joke. That comes from all the wrestling and all the other, you know, workouts he needs to do as an MMA fighter compared to a boxer. Boxers don't need those huge legs. They don't need them. Definitely yeah, not the legs, but the arms, I think that that left arm mess, I got to admit, like you're right to kind of point that out because that's like you're pushing that, those muscles, are like you're pushing muscles, the tricep and, 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 you know, that lat, you know, back, back there bro, back, bro. Like uh, trainers want you to do pull-ups for reasons because power is generated from the lats and the shoulders. And yo, this dude's looking, uh, might be big right now. But we've never, but we never questioned his power. I, or as far as I know, it's always but been, you know, the technique and, and the ability. It's the confidence that this picture exudes. It's like, yo, how are you in there with a two-time multiple champion with your hands behind your back? You know, it's just given. And again, this could be on purpose. This could be strategic. This could be part of the plan. Like, you know, there's, there's a reason why there's so many people watching this particular show right now live. This guy moves the needle and he knows how to cause a ruckus on the internet i believe mcgregor's intelligent yeah and if you look at the photo or uh, the caption of it what he wrote is they say i got no hands so you're right it is very strategic he really did pick this photo because i'm sure he's got a lot of people taking lots of photos and he's able to to be really selective on what he wants to uh, what he wants his audience what he wants you know us the fans to see and um you know it's definitely all about being bombastic and and being the most uh uh, confident guy out there. And you're right. That picture does say it says exactly that. But then, you know, all of us are also realizing, oh, yeah, but this is Pauli Malignaggi, the guy who they used to say can't bust an egg. So Matt, maybe. I'm sorry. I thought you were done in that pause. I apologize. No, that's it. I was just going to say, you know, maybe it, it, it is just uh, it is just for show. Matt, I mean, we're going to get into some hypotheticals here with you. My you're favorite. the May guy. When Mayweather does that, lead right you know he usually lands that um but would a guy like mcgregor kind of do like one uh, uh, an mma shoot right like just bend down and kind of reach for the clinch not necessarily a takedown but reach for the clinch to get under that right hand and be on the inside and he's got to have those cat-like reflexes from all that shooting is what i'm thinking so maybe He's not going to be as slow as we think. Is is that going to be a tactic that he uses to defend against that punch? A absolutely. Um, do I think it's going to be his number one tactic? Probably not. Because, again, you also have to think about this. The ref's going to be extra cautious or extra conscious, I should say, of... Oh, my God, ref. Who does Floyd bring in? He usually likes Weeks, right? No, not Weeks. The uh, other... Um, what's Bayless, the, Bayless, Bayless, he loves right, Bayless. Yeah. Remember, Bayless was the one who stopped Madonna when Madonna yeah. backed him up to the. Not gonna let any oh. ref um allow McGregor to hold him. Oh yeah, like any sort of like grappling on any sort of level will be taken away. Because let's be honest, at range, that's where Mayweather's gonna shine because McGregor won't be able to box for twelve rounds for three minutes each round against Mayweather at range. Like he's just gonna be outclassed easily there. Um. You know, the idea is if he gets on the inside and roughs him up a bit, a la Madonna, you know, does he have a shot? That's always been the idea. So, I, yeah, I think that's probably going to be a tactic. But I, I think he, he's probably going to not use the clinch as much as we think due to the ref. 
Well, that that's definitely going to be important. What hey, referee? Also, um, sorry, Ness, cut you off. All good. All good. Um, so I remember during the buildup that Brandon Schwab guy who was on a uh, Showtime helping with the uh, commentating yeah. for the press oh. shop. Sorry. Um, he was talking about like inside the clinch, Floyd's gonna have to deal with some things that he hasn't seen before. And I'm all of course I'm trying to think of what that could possibly be, but I think he mentioned some type of like the way that MMA fighters inside fight. Uh, Matt, is there like a s strategic difference? Do they do something yes. that's gonna be legal? And I think he even mentioned like the knees banging together, which I'm like, okay, that sounds completely MMA, but I guess you could see how in boxing sometimes when you tie up, you might accidentally, you know. Uh, lean one way and your knee might hit the other guy, but like that's do you think he plans on using any of these types of uh, techniques? I'll put it this way the whole knees banging each other on the inside, like I think I don't know why he said that, but the idea of like punching on the inside and especially like with one arm tied up, um, it's something that's used in MMA a lot. Um, and that, that's been sort of evolved and within the sport for at least 20, 20, like some odd years since the 90s. Um, so the idea of going up against the cage pummeling, uh, going for underhooks and trying to shoot some uppercuts on the inside, dirty him up. That's always been a style within MMA. Can he use that in the boxing ring? Can McGregor work the clinch against the ropes, have one arm tied up and work uppercuts, dig to the body? Yeah, there's little things that MMA fighters do in terms of how they lock arms, how they grab the body that's a little bit different than boxers. Um, is it going to play a massive factor into the fight? I have no idea, but it's definitely going to be something that's going to be there at least the, the second they go in the clinch. Watch the 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 arm placement of McGregor, um, because he's a southpaw. His right arm is is probably going to be the one that's going to be tying up Mayweather, and his left arm is going to be free. And he's it's just going to be interesting to see. That's all I'm going to say. Like there's little things he can do. What's crazy is that when I think of a Mayweather fight, I think of how Mayweather on the inside uses his elbows and his forearms, you know, and he's not the MMA guy. So it, I think it is interesting when they do get in that first clinch, but I think he's going to, like, nullify uh, um, McGregor in the, uh, in, in the first couple of rounds when it comes to the inside of the clinches. And I think you're right. He's going to want to stay on the outside. But he, he's admitted himself that he's an older man. He's not going to be able to maybe move on his feet as much as he used to back in the no, that, day. That's selling the fight, though. You think that's so? I mean, telling the audience that he's an older man is trying to, you know, pitch a narrative, and I, I don't believe in that bullshit. But um, I, I wonder if it's – I mean, I, we're used to Mayweather taking four, maybe five rounds to figure an awkward guy out. But Mystic Mac is what you call him? It's not what I call him. That's what he calls himself. He's saying this one is going to go four. Matt, you call him that. And 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 we know, listen, what we do know about Mayweather is he's he's great. He's great. But his most vulnerable rounds are inside those four rounds. Whenever you think about Mayweather losing a round or being touched in a memorable moment in his fight, it's usually in the beginning of the fight. It's usually right between one through four. After that, he kind of gets shit together, and it's a shutout. Think about I, it. I don't think he has to worry about that in this fight, and I'll tell you why. Because when that happens, those are guys who usually kind of are able to, you know, rough them up. Or you think of Maidana, who just went all out in those first couple of rounds. Maidana's natural instinct is to punch you. You know, when he's just letting himself go, he's punching. McGregor can't do that because to him, to let himself go, to just be reckless, to be that reckless style, to win those early rounds – he can't do that. He has to constantly keep himself restrained to not use his legs. I understand that people say he's a he's a striker or whatever, but come on, when Mayweather shuffles to the outside, if you're losing it and you don't have the restraint, your natural instinct might be to fucking pick up that left leg, you know, keep and try to like move Mayweather back inside or something like that. And you can't. You got to constantly be holding yourself back. So I don't think that he's gonna be able to take those early rounds by being you know, that wild style kind of what typically works against Mayweather. And he's certainly not as sharp as like a Zab Judah to win early rounds against a Mayweather like that. So I don't think, I don't, I don't know if he's going to have much success in the early rounds. I think you're right that Mayweather is vulnerable in those rounds, but I don't think that Connor's going to have much luck. You do realize that Connor is very aggressive in the first round. Like Connor is the type of guy, I'm not saying that he's going to do this against Mayweather because it's Mayweather, but I'm saying, you know, taking McGregor and analyzing him on his own separate from this fight individually, of course, right? 
I, I think that he is an aggressive fighter within the first couple of rounds. He usually dials in the range very quickly. Um, his re- his long record of first round knockouts is an example of that. Um, so the idea that McGregor is not going to give him any issues or he's not going to land any punches at all in the first few rounds, I think it's sort of idiotic. Like this is boxing at some point. Matt, how many of those first round knock knockouts occur after he knocks a guy on the da- on the ground and then starts smacking him with his like hammer fist? In boxing, you're able to get up from the first knockdown, recover, and adjust your style accordingly. I'm not saying he's going to finish him. I I never said those words. Did I, did I ever say those words, Stephen? You did not. You said that he was very. Uh, he's a threat in the first round. I'm saying that he's very aggressive in the first round. So I'm saying that the idea that he's not going to present any issues in the first few rounds is a little bit idiotic, in my opinion. Poor man, I feel so bad for you because you got to always like defend against like the MMA I got criticism. Tiger, man, I got <laughs> come on, it, like this is bullshit. But anyways, um, because come on, McGregor's gonna get stopped in like round seven. But anyways, I think that McGregor is gonna at least land a shot in the first four rounds. He has to land one, right? I mean that. There's no way he misses every shot. Like the 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 probability of that happening is just very slim. Dude, we've all seen that 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 uh that tweet, that that Instagram of uh, Neo blocking everything Mr. Smith throws his way and and uh it, and uh, the caption Mayweather McGregor cuz I feel like it's going to be a lot like that, man. I I don't know if McGregor is going to land that big shot early. I think he's going to miss ridiculously with big shots early. But we'll see. So, according to Mario Saunders of uh, the Vegas Post, the word from the UFC Performance Institute is that McGregor gave Paulie Malignaggi a pretty insane beating during their rounds of sparring. End quote. Insane beating. Now, with this new information... The picture, we can our thoughts can change on a picture where where we thought Paulie was just tired. It could be exhaustion from getting beat up, getting beat up, getting and, 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 and McGregor having his hands behind his back is like, hey, you motherfucker, you wanted you wanted this now what? Look, my hands are behind my back. Do something, man. I wish I could have been a fly in there, bro. And let's be honest, this is a 2017 version of Pauli Malignaggi. It's a Pauli Malignaggi that's very bloated. Why are you trying to discredit I'm the version Pauli? Oh, yeah, I'm just saying that a prime Pauli. Hold on, this hold on. Hey, you want to remind Pauli. everyone? Hold hold on. His last, hold on. Pauli's last fight was March 4th against Sam finished. Eggington. He got finished by Sam Eggington. Um, if this was 2010, 2009, and this was Pauly, Pauly would whoop him. Like, hands down, would just style on McGregor. But people fade. People's people's talent levels do fade over time. Like, that is just a fact. Especially Pauly's style. And then not to mention McGregor is a naturally bigger guy. So there's a lot to, to factor into that. Yeah, McGregor's easily, well, depending on what how what weight Pauly is, because God knows what weight he is right now. Um, I mean, McGregor could be 20 pounds heavier. And not to mention, you look at Paulie. Paulie's a little bit, like, you know, soft around the edges now. No offense to Paulie. I love Paulie. But you look at McGregor, he's all cut up. And you know that muscle weighs a lot more than fat. So you you see from just that picture how much more heavier McGregor has got to be. Well, I don't know, man. This is uh, some interesting stuff. And um, according to the same source, they're saying that um, – Connor had brought in multiple, uh, well, excuse me, countless top ranked boxers to help him spar. I heard he was sparring amateurs, though. I don't know. This picture that we discussed a couple of days ago, it looks like the Cuban little brother, uh, Loel the uh, Bartholomew, brother of Rancy's Bartholomew, with the blonde, kinky hair there. You know what I mean? But. Who knows? It could be a freaking MMA guy. They love dyeing their hair as well. Listen, I think we chopped it up enough. It's time to open up these phone lines. We're going to go to the number. You know it. You should save it in your phone. one 569 5241 Let us know your thoughts on Conor McGregor finally having his sparring session with Polly Lyon and Aji. I mean, Polly came out in front of everybody letting him know that if Connor was really going to fight Floyd, he should test the waters with someone as skilled as himself. 
And uh, as of yesterday, we've gotten what they both asked for. Uh, McGregor made sure to tell people on the press tour that he was bringing in Paulie for one reason and one reason only, and that was to shut his mouth. So um, let's get out to those callers. You know how to get us internationally on Skype. If uh, you want to call from another country, just add Nestor Gibbs on Skype. That's N-E-S-T-O-R-G-I. BBS, that's Nestor Gibbs on Skype, and the number to call in is 1-425-569-5241. We're going to go to Hotlanta with everyone's favorite caller. It's the Milkman, baby. I told y'all a long time ago, the Kirkland will go down three rounds. Oh, right hand. Now goes Kirkland. Next, I got milk, baby. Got milk, baby. Yeah, the milkman is back. Now, didn't I tell y'all yesterday it was going to be some strategic shit leaked from the camp with Paula and Connor? Didn't I tell you that? Give me a coin. Give me a coin. Call him, drop the ball, Matt. Right, my coin was first. Sorry, I'm sorry. My, call right. first. my coin was first. No, it was not. Your coin was last. Shut the fuck up. All right. All right. <laughs> You know, man, this is strategic right here, man. Uh, you know, I think Paul. I think they did bring Polly in. Uh, I think for sure to gain his boxing knowledge, but I think they are using him as a PR prop um, because he has a lot of credibility in the boxing community. And if they can show that Connor is kicking Polly's ass, then that adds a little more lure to the fight. So I think it's a prop. Um, secondly, the pitcher. Uh, you know, Connor's body, you know, he's he looking ripped up. <laughs> the closest body type I can find that kind of matches Connor's uh, body type that Florida's faced recently, he kind of reminds me of a Victor Ortiz, right? He had that big back, leaned out, big, big, big legs and shit. Um, and, you know, the Victor Ortiz and uh, Mayweather fight was going pretty good until that shit went sideways. But look, let's face it, man. Connor is not going to go in there. Wild style, Madonna style. He ain't going to do that. He just ain't got the boxing mechanics to do that. You know, it's a lot of nuances that go into throwing punches and, and, and setting up combinations and walking your man down. I think Connor is going to try to stay at range and try to set, and try to set uh, Mayweather up with a, with a one-two and clip him with that left hand. Um, and that's, that's, that's what it is, man. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But uh, remember, the milkman told you. The, the milkman told you. And I'm out. All right, Milkman, uh, really quick, um, someone, Matt, who in the chat actually requested the zoom in on Paulie's face? So I'm uh, zooming in. I have, I have no idea. Come on, man. It's easy to check in the chat, buddy. Get your life together. Just saying. Is it, my is friend. it Yeah, it was. Um, let me get on out to uh, our resident celebrity. Oh, he dropped off. All right, time to move on. We're going to New Jersey with Amin. Fellas, another great topic. I'm going to uh, chime in. Uh, I'm going to add on to what Milkman said about it. It's a whole lot more to throwing punches than just being strong. So the footwork and the timing, if, if, Maywa, excuse me, if McGregor is going to try to set Floyd up for a one-two, even if he gets footwork, because as an MMA fighter, he's accustomed to bouncing every now and again. So, boom. MMA fighters, and Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, MMA fighters that are considered good strikers, the fact that they would even use any sort of head movement or any sort of footwork or any sort of bounce makes them an above-average striker. That's a standard in boxing. And, and McGregor, in a couple weeks' time, and I know he has some boxing experience, He's not going to develop the type of footwork and head movement that's going to allow him to stay alive and get somebody like Floyd. So when he's going to try to set up a one-two and swing that wild left, the punches are just going to be coming too slow. So his best bet is to try to box a little bit and then go for broke if the fight makes it past the fourth round. Um, as far as the photo, listen, Paulie is a salesman. Paulie still got us finding streams and, 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 and us watching him get knocked out by Sam Eddington. So, in marketing, he's one of the greatest at it. So, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going in there off of, you know, half a pint of Ben and Jerry's 
and he's just going in there to collect his check and, 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 and secure his spot at the announcer's table, you know, for the whole event. So I don't read much into it. It's one photo. It's more of a photo op for McGregor than anything. But, it, you know, it adds intrigue. But if you understand, you know, combat sports and, and the real technicalities of it, um, I don't think it edges you to make a decision uh, for McGregor at that point. So great show, fellas. Great topic. And uh, that's my call. I mean, thank you for calling in all the way from uh, Trenton, New Jersey. Listen, I want um, to talk about Paulie's tweet, uh, because if you go down to the subtext, he says, good first day in the gym with the notorious one and his team. Look forward to offering them whatever I can in this camp. Whatever I can in this camp, Matt. I think now, now the M M team uh, McGregor have gotten the, you know, bullshit out of the way, so to speak, right? Because it was like, you know, Paulie was like, yo, you're, you're not ready for Floyd. You need to fight someone like me before you go barking up the Floyd tree. So McGregor's like, oh, you wanted a fight? We're going to bring you in and spawn. It ain't even going to be a fight. We're going to bring you in and spawn. But um, I think after the whole pride and machismo thing, it's more about picking Paulie's brain, you know? Um, and, 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 yo, Paulie knows a lot. He does. You know, I, I've interviewed him countless of times, and I've always asked him, why doesn't he or will he ever become a trainer? And you can tell that he would have to be good at it based off the way that he commentates in, in, in most of these live fights. But when you when you hear him say, look forward to offering them whatever I can in this camp, you think he means physically in sparring or, again, that boxing IQ, what he can offer in terms of game plan on how to use your, you know, mm -hmm. Whatever it is that McGregor feels he may have an advantage, whether that be size, whether that be reach, whether that just be strength. And, uh -huh. and maybe Paulie set up a boxing game plan because, yeah, McGregor has all the talent in the world. It's natural talent. And it's got him this far to get into a boxing fight. But, Paulie's knowledge. Excuse me? I would assume that Connor also wants Paulie's knowledge. Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, Pauly, I mean, like you said, Paulie has probably one of the best minds of the game, especially in terms of being able to articulate it in a very simple but efficient way to people that may not know what's going on. And for a guy like Connor, who may not know all the um, specifics of what is going on in the boxing ring, Paulie can explain it to, to Connor and break it down for him and be like, this is how you do it. Um, and Paulie may do that better than anyone right now that's alive. Let's just be honest. Um, so I, I mean, anyone should be lucky to have Paulie in their camp for any fight, let alone a fight against Mayweather. So I, I would assume that due to Paulie's age, his physical state, that the sparring isn't the biggest thing. It's the mind. Yeah. How well do Italians and Irish people get along? Um, I'm neither Italian or Irish, so I would. I, I can't. thought you were the historian. What's history tell us? You went. You got I mean, major in history. Okay, in history, like in terms of like New York, because I always think about New York. Probably from New York. Um, Italians and Irish don't really get along that much. Hmm. But I guess, I mean, I guess they like, do this time. I guess they do this time. Listen, when you think of Paulie. Obviously, you think of uh, all his accolades and, you know, the, the the great position that he's in with Showtime, but you can't help but bring up the knockout ratio. But isn't this the one time where that knockout ratio doesn't matter? If you can put Paulie's boxing brain into the physical body of McGregor, how much more of a shot does he have? He would have a lot more of a shot, but unfortunately, that's not going to be able to, to happen. There's no way that, that he could no way in three weeks for six weeks. I mean, is it going to be six weeks? 
I mean, we're only on the 26th, 21st. So, yeah, it's about five weeks. But away. you're leaving on God knows what day to head to a... Yeah, I mean, airplanes fly fast, buddy. He's going to New York to commentate, then he's what right day? back in the gym. What day would he leave? Would he leave for all fight week or just... Well, in the interview, he said he would leave Monday. Okay, so he's gone all of next week. So he misses all of next week. He comes back. It's it's already August. So he has... Well, he's not going all of the night. He's gone. He leaves Monday. So, you know, Tuesday. He'll come back Tuesday, Sunday. So he'll, it's he'll come back Sunday, Monday, maybe. So it's a week. Okay, thank you for proving my point. <laughs> well, it's, so it's six days and seven, seven days. My bad. Yeah, but again, it's his mind. They could be Hold communicating. You, not, let me finish my point before you keep cutting me off and trying to pick away my point when it's not said yet. Um, five weeks, six weeks, four weeks, it doesn't matter. It's not enough time for anyone to impart enough wisdom, enough boxing wisdom and knowledge to a guy to beat Mayweather. It's, it's an impossibility. It is still a puncher's chance, no matter what, in my opinion. Is it is it stuff that maybe Connor can use? Uh, the knowledge that he takes from Paulie can use it in his MMA career later down the road. Yeah, that's probably more likely. Uh, because there's no way he'll be able to implement it against Mayweather in five weeks. It's an impossibility. Well. You can't gain that much time and experience back. I mean, Mayweather has been boxing literally for, what, 35 years since he could literally walk and put on gloves. And McGregor's been boxing for, he's been semi-boxing for maybe 18 years, 20 years, tops. So there's just a huge difference there. There's 15, 20 years of just combat knowledge that one guy has over the other, let alone boxing knowledge, let alone at the highest level. Paulie, while a great mind and great trainer, can he make a difference? Honestly, I mean, ask yourself that. Can he make a difference in this fight? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm doubtful. Joshua, New Orleans, talk to us. Yeah, yeah come back to me. I'm, I'm working right now. All right. We're going out to Rod in Philly. Talk to us. Rod in Philly. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, so I, uh, you know, Paulie said it. Paulie said it himself on the um, Showtime broadcast for the. Uh, I can't remember one of the recent fights that he, you know, physically he's not, he's not, gonna, he's not there to, you know, challenge him physically. He's there more to see what he's got and help him mentally. So he's already said that. And you know, if if, if you do, if you look at it, Floyd's been. He, he's kind of been looking for somebody to help Connor so he can give him a challenge. He, he first wanted Freddie to, to train him for the fight. And then I think he also mentioned Paulie uh, being a good look for Connor. So I think, you know, that all these things is what Floyd wants for a little bit more of a competitive fight. So that's how I feel about it. Well, all right, Rod. Thanks for calling in. Matt, what do you think about that? You think this is uh, part of Floyd's plan? No. I mean, could it be beneficial to Floyd as a result of just building up the fight? So, therefore, you know, maybe they're earning more dollars. Yeah, I mean, but it's not like his plan. It's more McGregor's plan. He's the one that set it up. Right? I mean, how, how could it be Mayweather's plan if McGregor's the one that set this up? All right. I want to remind everyone listening to us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get those notifications when we go live. Just yesterday, we did about three shows, so you don't want to miss any one of those. Make sure you subscribe on the YouTube channel and hit that thumbs up button. If it's not blue, you didn't do it right. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It helps uh, with the visibility of the show, helps us get new callers, and it lets the people around here that make this thing happen know that you're enjoying it. We're going to go out to the UK, United Kingdom, to talk to Coach Mitty. Mitty, well, could he be in the United Kingdom? This guy travels so much. What's up, Mitty? Yo, what's up? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back in London, guys. So, uh, just listening to to the call, and uh, I've just picked up on what the uh, the last caller said. Uh, I'm not so sure that this is a Floyd's idea, and but I agree with Matt that it helps the promotion of the fight, and it helps Floyd in a way. Uh, because it gives McGregor a bit more uh, credibility to have like um, 
uh, someone like Pote in his camp. Uh, so it's going to be, uh, I guess, like McGregor prepared to the best of uh, uh, his, its ability in such a short amount of time. But it's not going to change anything. And, uh, you know, I'm only going to repeat what everyone said here. Um, Pote is just there to maybe just give him like a few pointers, uh, help McGregor to deal with uh, someone as tricky as Floyd, uh, you know, help him understand when someone is trying to set a trap and, you know, try to react to it. But, you know, six weeks is, you know, it's not enough time. Even like five years would not, would not, would not have been enough time anyway. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's good for for the promotion in general. And it's also good for Polly because I'm sure he's picking up uh, a check on, uh, a good check as well, right? He's smart, he's making money everywhere, making money from commenting and making money now from uh, the publicity that he's getting from being involved and also the check that he's getting from McGregor for being involved in aspiring, I'm sure. Anyway, so that, that, that's what I've got ready. All right, well, Coach Mini, <laughs> thank you for calling in. We got a message from the producer. What's up? We got a ringer, KM star. Bring him in. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good morning. Well, good afternoon, KM star. What's going on, brother? Nothing, nothing. I enjoy this topic, even though as a boxing fan, meaning, you know, boxing first before any other combat sport, you know, I have difficulty putting a whole lot of store in anything that, that's said or done. I agree with your comment earlier that, Mayweather suddenly is really old, really tired, really takes longer to recover from training, everything possible. And it, it, he's just so interested in selling this fight and making it a credible, you know, uh, match that it, it's, it's actually fun to watch. Like, I think the London conference was a little over the top. It actually brought the fight to, like, WWE levels. But they, they're not really marketing it as anything other than entertainment, you know, a big event for everybody. Uh, speaking specifically to the Malinaji uh, sparring, that that absolutely was a released photo, you know, to to enhance his credibility. Even in Paulie's own podcast, I haven't listened to any recent episodes, but he mentioned that they might call him in, and he said that for him, when he if he's going to go in there as a retired fighter, he views his job as doing whatever it is that the camp wants him to do. He doesn't have any specific, you know, um, issues with whatever they choose to release. So they chose to release this, a picture of him, Roy Jones style, that's the funny thing, with his hands behind his back. You know, that would have been fun to watch, Roy Jones versus Conor McGregor. Uh, that would have lasted five seconds. I think, you know, <laughs> this is like, it's, it's hilarious. But, I mean, the event is so huge, it's so much fun. All my casual friends are calling me and asking when we're going to get together to watch this fight because they know I'm the boxing person. So, I mean, this is great for boxing. If anyone disagrees with that, they're really not, not, not really interested in promoting our sport. This is absolutely terrific for boxing. And, uh, you know, going back to, like, it's, you know, anything else about credibility, yeah, I mean, you know, it happened. Paulie's in camp. It, I'm sure McGregor's actually learning a lot about it. Paulie definitely is a smart commentator. You can tell he would be an intelligent and, and really good trainer. But at the same time, we don't know what, like, it's hard to tell what McGregor brings in a boxing ring, right? You know, we're talking about the reflexes, the speed. The ability to take what someone tells you to do and actually go execute it, there's such different things. And like Coach Schmitty said, usually it's the result of years and years of repetition to make it happen. You know, so, you know, right now I'm, I'm trying to find the best betting lines from, for Mayweather. I'm going to go take money from wherever I can and put it in my sports book account. That money's still on Mayweather. And I look back in time, and if I had only did that for the past 20 years, you know how much more money I would have in my bank account now? versus what I have, simply by just betting Mayweather, whatever the odds were. You know, even if $100 paid $20, it was still a better bet. So that's what I'm going to do for this fight. And that's my call. KM Star, man, I want to thank you for calling in. Matt, make sure you mute him. And um, let's throw this one around to our listeners, everyone there. You could drop your comment in on this one. You can call in and give your take on this one. You know the number, one four two five five six nine. 5241. Remember, international callers, just add Nestor Gibbs on Skype to call in absolutely free. Matt, um, mm -hmm. what if, what if, I mean, Paulie and Floyd have been friends for a while. Not publicly, like, it's not like they hang out or anything, but, um, 
we all knew where Paulie sided with in the Mayweather Pacquiao. We know that he's been heavily um against Pacquiao and feels that Pacquiao has always been dirty, remember? I mean, I mean, he just was talking about that. He stays talking about the PD Pacquiao thing. But um, could he just be not a flat out spy? Not a flat out spy, not Mayweather paying him, but because of the relationship, because of Mayweather's influence with Showtime, Paulie's position at Showtime, can't he just simply call Paulie? Like, hey, how was it? No one has to know that's Floyd calling him. Um, I don't I think, think it would be very bad. advantageous for Paulie to do that. Uh, mainly if he's, if he does sign an uh, NDA and he go and, and Mayweather calls him and he says anything, like it. Well, that's a rumor only. I well, it's not even a rumor. It's just you throwing out a hypothetical. No, no, no. I'm talking about the rumor about the NDA. Oh, oh. Um, I mean, we have to assume at this point that there is some sort of NDA, right? Like we have to. It's a rumor. I mean, I I did some research when I was doing the description and everything that I could find. It's only a rumor. I understand that's only a rumor, but I mean, are we assuming at this point that there was an NDA? I mean. F- like, are you, uh, are you, in your opinion, in your mindset, assuming that there was one? Well, based off the tweet, maybe there's a verbal thing. Based off Paulie's tweet and him saying, like a know, handshake, he, like a handshake. Yeah, thing, yeah like, like, hey, hey, man, don't you know? And he's like, yeah, don't worry about it. I got you, con. You know, what I mean, it's not like that. I don't think there was an uh, an actual contract. No. I'll put it this way: if the sh- if the roles were reversed and it was Mayor they're sparring someone like a, a Nate Diaz or someone that has experience with mcgregor just throwing out a hypothetical right would you assume that mayweather would have that smart partner sign a nda yeah mayweather yeah because he did that with um and, and, all right all right i just wanted to yes or no he did that with already um or alex ariza wasn't it when it was Ariza when he brought somebody yeah. in to cause you know some shit you know i think mcgregor has often emulated stars one of them being Mayweather. I mean, McGregor has emulated Mayweather throughout his career, and I think it's been quite obvious. Um, he's taken a lot of of his own career moves off of what Mayweather has done in his career. So I, I would assume, actually, that McGregor would do NDAs, official ones, in contract, in writing, uh, because other stars have done that. He would see that and know that and recognize that that's a smart move. Um, so I, I would assume there is an NDA. But anyways, um, I forget what, what the initial question even was, to be honest. I mean, would Floyd call him? Would would? Oh, yeah. no. I mean, no. I don't think, that, I don't think that's going to happen. Hmm. Well, well, honest, it, why, why would Floyd feel the need to? I mean, if there's one thing that's become very obvious, especially in the press tours, is that Mayweather does not think that McGregor is anything. He thinks of him as a paycheck. Yeah, but, yo, just because... Like, like if, if Mayweather felt threatened in any way by McGregor, he would have reacted differently in certain circumstances. But he didn't. He laughed him off. You mean when he rubbed his head? Joke. You mean when he rubbed yeah, his head? Yeah, stuff like and that. There was, like, an alleged, there was an alleged um, no touching clause there either. So, you know, NDAs and contracts don't mean shit to certain guys. Who the fuck is that guy? True. I mean, you you can think that um, that Mayweather would would call him up. I'm not saying that he wouldn't. I'm just saying that doesn't seem likely. You know, I don't want to be the optimistic one or the casual one, but wasn't Kobe 18? Wait, what? Wasn't Kobe like 18 when he joined the NBA or something like that? I yeah, don't watch yeah. other sports, but we've yeah. seen other we've seen strange things, you know. That you just was never know. that style. That style could be something like, you know, the way the way that Madonna cut the distance for Floyd. Right. It was with sheer aggression. But I, I, I wonder if if Connor can cut the distance with Floyd with that that lead hand. You know, he does that weird 
karate kid type shit. You know what I mean? And it kind of mesmerizes his opponents. They get caught up in that hand and they want to start tapping that hand and get it out the way. And then boom, he strikes. Am I right? Or am I right? I mean, I don't, you know, it's your guy. Not my I mean, guy. I mean, you could be right about that, but just for the record, back in the day, a lot of people went into the NBA at the age of 18. Just, just not, want to throw not, that not out. Not because there. they were fucking great. No, there's a lot of people that came into the NBA at the age of 18. That it became such a thing that they created a rule against it. So, just anyways. So, if anyone listening thinks that we don't know anything about other sports, you know. Well, I definitely don't know anything about yeah. other sports. Yeah, one of us doesn't know anything. One of us does. There's a ton of casuals watching this show because of Connor. So, yeah, I mean, but whatever. We only focus on boxing. Connor's only being discussed because he's fighting in the boxing ring. But let's get back out to the phone lines. We got a lot of people on the lines. We got some people in the UK we got to get to. We're going to go out to uh, who do we got? Who do we got? 646. Well, I was going to the UK, right? Oh, they go to the UK. That's fine. You hear me? He didn't hear me, guys. Dala D. Beyonce Productions. BJ was going to beat me, didn't you? You could think he's going to beat me. He got to lose that song. Why is it Walter so down 90,000? This guy has been perfect for like eight years, nine years. If Walter wants some of his words, he can definitely get him on the A-side. Boxingwords.com. Hey, fellas, how you doing? What up, Rob? Rob, what's going on? Uh, just driving back from work. Shitty weather. Um, so I missed the start of the show. I don't know how how it's been going with Paulie. I I saw a picture. That shitty weather got you with a shitty connection, Rob. You might have to get us back in, or wait till you 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 park us if you're still driving. Um, let me go out to someone else on Skype while you get it together. Scorsese, talk to us. I might be crazy, but Conor McGregor. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, I think Rob needs to mute. Yeah, do you want to move on? There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Rob, we're going to have to move on. Your signal's bad. I guess you didn't even hear any of the other stuff I said. I, I, okay, I, I was going to tell you. Good luck. No, but anyway, man, shit. I think Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather, because of Floyd's 40 year old age and sitting out that ring. Getting older, it might be more competitive than Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. It it, it definitely got that kind of feel. <gasps> Confident, cocky, he arrogant. He actually do fight on the regular. You know what I'm saying? Like if you ain't got to worry about if you ain't got to worry about a kick coming at your head, how much easier is fighting? I get it, it's not a fight, it's a boxing match. But as a man, if I if I'm 28 and a 40 year old step to me, I'm bigger than him, I'm taller than him, I'm faster than him, I'm longer than him, I'm all of that. I'm gonna whip his ass. That's just my thought. You know? That's just my. If you don't feel like that, you don't have confidence in yourself, and that's why you ain't Conor McGregor. That's why you ain't him. But hardcore boxing fan talking right here, not one of the MMA fans is calling in simply because it's Conor. For anybody that's listening. I just think this shit could get out of hand for Floyd, man. It's very possible. Then again, it's very fucking possible that Floyd just, you know, just flat out make this dude look like he in the second grade in his box and shit. But but I, I, I'm fucking with this fight, though, and in, in my own little way. But that's it for me. But uh, Scorsese, does Mayweather need a knockout? in this fight is it shameful for the quote-unquote greatest in boxing or you know self-proclaim the best ever not get a knockout on a sheer novice boxer better floyd he's he's, he's done his tbe shit for 12 years now 10 15 years now well not tbe shit probably been about five or six years well to him he did all that by not getting knocked out so no like personally nah. Not for me, but I could see that if it was Canelo, if it's a power puncher, a guy that really, you know, young guy that can throw them hands and that's what he does and that's what we know him for, yeah, you got to knock him out. With Floyd, I really don't know what you got to do. Just just basically win the fight. We know what we get with him. Boxing fans are definitely giving Floyd a pass, man. I swear to God. How the fuck do you fight a dude? Like, you're, the, you're our best, man. This is like, what was that movie? Uh, Achilles, right? With Troy, you just, oh... Uh, Whenever we're going to lose the battle, let's just go get Brad Pitt's character. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to tell me that Brad Pitt didn't get a kill? Fucking Floyd got a kill, man. 
He can't go 12 rounds with someone that's never fought. Come on, man. The, uh, the love for Floyd is insane. I don't think it's a love for Floyd. I think it's just a. All right. You know, you know what I mean? Like people just like assume that's it's gonna go decision. Like it's not it's not a love, it's just like it's it's Floyd. It's Floyd fights. They're gonna go all 12 rounds, it's gonna be a decision, he's gonna score. That should you know, not be you know acceptable. I mean? That's acceptable. That's acceptable. What the public has gotten for years. No, 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 no. That's acceptable with Marcos Maidana because Marcos Maidana has an amateur background. Maidana fought Lucas Matisse in the amateurs four times. That's acceptable with Maidana, who had a pro career. I'm not Over talking 20 about months. what's acceptable. Me and you are talking about different things here. I'm talking no, about no, no, the public. We need, as, as the show host, we need to pitch that narrative. People need to know that it's not acceptable. Those other people had resumes, accolades. They did things. Connor's. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to the. I'm, well, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to the public and say that Mayweather is gonna go for the knockout because I don't know it's not that. About going, he should. It's not about going. He it's should get it. The, the public narrative doesn't matter for Mayweather. He doesn't care. He doesn't That's care. Bullshit. If, if we all were like, you need a knockout. Why did he rematch me? Definitely, he definitely going on twelve. Why did he fight reason. Pacquiao? Then if the public narrative doesn't fucking matter, yeah, right. The it matters. Why is he fighting McGregor? Because the public is demanding it. No, because the dollars demand it. Come on. No, obviously the dollars demand it, but the public. No, if the no, public no. didn't make Conor McGregor relevant, he wouldn't the be boxing, relevant. Stop the boxing it. public didn't want this. Come on. Like, what are you Yo, talking about? The boxing public don't matter when the rest of the world is sitting there. We all know, you and I know, as everyday podcast hosts of this show, that the boxing public is small. I it's think. I, I, that, you well, know what I'm saying? You, let me finish a single thought. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think I, I've often gone on this show and said that we should demand things because the public can dictate the market. I, I've often said that. So I don't blame you for having that mindset. But when it's Mayweather, we the public will never win. The public will never win with Mayweather. And the public is now... <laughs> I'm sorry, this is the truth. The public is now so conditioned and beat down to assume we're going to get A, B, and C from Floyd Mayweather. So I'm sorry that I and the rest of us are not clamoring for a knockout because we all are conditioned not to get a knockout. Sorry. That's what we all have seen for years and years and years. So until we see something different, why should we change our mind? Because Conor McGregor has it never... Matter. It's never mattered about the opponent. He could have finished Robert Guerrero. He couldn't have... He could have even made finish Canelo. He had Canelo pretty hurt at certain points in the fight. No, Canelo is a different animal. You not understand what I'm saying? Mayweather doesn't give a fuck about knocking people out. He doesn't. He doesn't. Right. Get over it. Get over so, it. So, so if there was like, um, I don't and know, he's I'm never going to care about what we think. He's never. Look, I'm over here on the East Coast, right? So over here we have like the AM One League, you know, Rucker Park, all that in New York. Yeah. All right, so you heard of that stuff, right? Cool. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right, so what if there was a baller, right? Mm -hmm. New York City AM1 baller, not an NBA, -er, you know what I'm saying? But an N1, an N1 dude that's getting crazy recognition. People are demanding this dude gets picked up. 90 seconds. And he doesn't want to go in the league. He's happy doing what he's doing. But. Somehow he ends up in this Mayweather Conor McGregor situation where it's him and fucking LeBron. You're going to tell me LeBron ain't supposed to spank this nobody ass motherfucker? Come on, bro. Let's just be real. LeBron is very different than Mayweather. Basketball is very different than boxing. Oh God, no. We're oh, talking one on one, man. We ain't no, talking one. No, 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 no. Let me finish. Seconds. Because basketball, especially LeBron James, it's not focused on defense. It's, it's, it's an offensive game in, in the sense where you have to score to win. Mayweather has always been about, I'm not going to get hit, and I'm going to win rounds off of that. You get what I'm saying? Like The, the, the mindset of how, of how each person that you compared plays the sport is very different. I'm sorry. Whatever, Matt. You just want to be my opposite. How, how, what's the equivalent to dunking in, 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 in boxing? What? Fucking what's a knockout. And how often does fucking Mayweather get a knockout? That's why, that's why when people get dunk, 
That's how what often, people talk. How they, often? They all in your face. How it's often? A fucking, it's a statement. Ness, people how often? Tell, that's why they're so ignorant. Why, why are you being ignorant here? If you just said that, then, then you should know that fucking Mayweather doesn't go dunk. He doesn't go and dunk. He doesn't go get the knockout. He doesn't get knocked out. No, but he does if the guy's not on his level. And Connor is 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 supposed no, to no, not be on no. his level. Whatever, yeah. whatever, man. Okay, okay. I, this is his MMA side. The world must know. He's got an MMA podcast, too. So this is his MMA side. Trying it's to make it. The MMA side. This is me knowing what Mayweather does. No, bro. No. Come on, man. And, and not living in the fucking clouds and fantasy land where we think Mayweather is something he's not. Sorry. He's a professional, and Connor's not a professional boxer. He's not. It doesn't he's matter. Not a professional it boxer. Doesn't matter. Mayweather's going to box the same way but he always this does. this fight is over, he's he not even the fucking thing He always he's does. He's going to do the same fucking thing he always does. You, Because you're making it okay. I'm not making it okay. I just know what's going to happen. I know. I don't live in fantasy land. All right. No, you. it's different for you to say... Mayweather will never go for the knockout. Mayweather doesn't get knocked out, so I, I, I'm not expecting it of him. That's but, what I'm saying. That's what but, I'm saying. But, but based on this situation, we should be seeing a knockout. <laughs> Yo, this guy's not Victor Ortiz. You know what I mean? He hasn't been in this ring. He hasn't fought under this set of rules. He hasn't gone 12 rounds. You know? For you to say, oh, Mayweather never gets a knockout. He ain't going to get a... Yo, it's it, it doesn't even make sense. Connor is 0-0, man. Floyd's been in there with everybody. Yeah. Castillo. Yeah. Connor. Mo. 20 years ago. Canelo, no, he, but he's seen every single fucking style, bro. So you're going to tell me a novice shouldn't get knocked out? Shouldn't or will? Like, those are two very different words. I'm not saying Mayweather will I, knock him out, uh, Matt. I never said that. My argument is that Mayweather should. He should. That should be his duty. <laughs> like, he should wake up every day like, I'm going to knock this guy out because he is not on my level. The difference is that you place all of boxing's hopes and dreams on this fight and on Mayweather. I don't. I think this fight's a sideshow. I think this has no bearing on boxing or MMA. And you are you think very differently. You think that this fight, if Mayweather loses, boxing's dead. Uh, you think this this shows that MMA is the weaker form. Like you 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 think those things. I but don't. I say that to get under your skin. That's purely for money, and that's all it is. I say that to get under your skin because I know that you're an MMA guy and it bothers you. But <laughs> let me tell you this. The truth is, if Conor McGregor beats Floyd, that will be the narrative. That MMA, MMA is better. You know that. The, the same. Look at the chat, for God's sakes, Matt. Stop it. I mean, you know, you're, you're unrealistic today. I think that this is just his per He woke up today to be like, you know, um, because so we're talking opinions. WWE. Sure. And these, have, these like, have been my uh, opinions for months that this fight has no bearing on either sport. This is a sideshow. This belongs in a circus. You're insane to still be saying that when a guy like KM Star or Patreon, and by the way, if you want to know how KM Star cut the line, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the boxing voice. But a guy like KM Star sold it to you. Even he is drawn in. Scorsese really? got drawn, drawn into a sideshow. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Time, time, time. I'm drawn in, but I still know it's a sideshow. I, I can be drawn in, and I still don't think it's the greatest thing ever. This isn't Canelo Triple G. This isn't John Jones, Daniel Cormier. This isn't those two. This isn't that. This is a sideshow. I can still love it. I can still be hyped about it, but at least I know what the fuck it is, and I recognize that, and I don't think it's anything more. You seem like a very salty person. I seem like a eight one eight. Oh no, wait, it's uh seven one eight. Seven one eight, right? Seven one eight, you're up. First time caller. What's going on? Yeah, this is Chris from the MMA holes. What's going on, guys? Chris from where? The MMA holes. This is Chris from the MMA holes. Oh, oh what's going on? How's it going today? Good, First time. good. Just not jumping in on this. This is interesting. This is interesting stuff here. I see uh, the boxing MMA world colliding. I want to give a shout out to the uh, chat room over here. Look at MMA representing. 
in the boxing community. It's very interesting to see this. Now, I did have the pleasure of interviewing Paulie Malinaji, real nice guy, this and that. I'm fascinated by this whole story. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. If Mayweather does not knock out Conor McGregor, 100% this hurts boxing. To anyone that thinks that this does not hurt boxing, they are delusional. Absolutely de- delusional. Preach. And it's hot right now. It's hot. Preach, buddy. Have, have Preach. a guy come in here, an amateur guy. It's insane. It's freaking insane. Guys, seriously, Floyd Mayweather is hes the goat of boxing. I don't care if he's 50 years old. He's the guy. He's never lost. You can't lose to an amateur boxer like Conor McGregor, the goat of the MMA. You just can't do it. Does he have to get the knockout? You got to fire it up. That's the that's the argument, though. Uh, He has to get the knockout, right? Maybe you can do a better job at arguing with my co-host here because he believes that. Put him on. Put him on with me. He's there. Time out. Time out. Time out. Hold on. Hold on. Both you guys, Chris, Chris Ness, Chris Ness. Hold on a second. I have a simple question: Did Muhammad Ali need to get the knockout against uh, Anoki? Nobody knows Anoki, so hold on, hold on. we're I'm talking out with generation. Anoki? No, no, I, I'll help you, Chris. Wait, Chris. Wait, hold, on. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll help you. I'll cr- Chris, I'll help you. Hey, Ness, hey, hey, hold on. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Ness. Hold on. No. Ali fought a pro wrestler. Hold on, Chris. Generation. Hold on. Hold on. Muhammad Ali fought a fucking pro wrestler in a mixed rules fight. And he didn't get the knockout. It wasn't a boxing fight. This is a boxing fight matter. with boxing rules. It doesn't rules. fucking matter. That's it's Muhammad Ali. Floyd boxing rules. Floyd got it the way he wanted. Floyd got it the way he wanted. If Floyd, if Floyd wanted, he could have got in the octagon. No, he got it the way he wanted. With all his rules. So it's his fight. He should get the knockout. <laughs> Absolutely. 100. This man, give, give this man an award. He's 100% right here. This is ridiculous. Uh, dude, the other guy's insulting me. Listen, if this was Absolutely MMA, insulting. Chris, Chris, if this insulting was... Insulting you, insulting you. Did you even watch the Ali Anoki fight? Listen, if you this was MMA... History? If, if an MMA guy. guy. You should know your history. Jesus, Matt. If this were MMA, we would be saying that McGregor got to get a chokehold or fucking destroy Mayweather and he's got to knock him out because that's what he does. So Floyd got to do... I wouldn't thing. say it has any bearing on fucking MMA or boxing. I would say it has no bearing on it. Oh, my God. It's not about the bearing, man. Randy it's about the James Tony. Did Randy Couture or James Tony have any bearing on either sport? No. They're fucking sideshows. Matt, we don't care about that. They're what side we shows. care about is the outcome of this fight and how it should play out. That's it. The outcome doesn't matter. It's a you fucking sideshow. You need to tell me, if this thing goes 12 rounds, this goes 12 rounds, boring decision against an amateur fighter, it's a win for Mayweather? It's a complete loss. That is absolutely it's, it's neither. It's, wait, 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 a win for Mayweather. Mayweather only cares about the check, so he's going to get a check no matter what the fuck. And it's a win for Mayweather. Chris, thank you for joining. Let me finish, Chris. Mayweather doesn't care if he gets a knockout or goes 12. All he cares about is the check. He's going to get the check regardless, first off. And, and the real question is, does it hurt boxing if it goes all 12? No. No. Why, how would it hurt boxing? W- would it affect viewership? Would it affect attendance? Would it affect kids joining the sport? Probably. I, 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 perception, man. You really, probably get do we really more. think that at this point? I think, hell yeah. I think that you would get way more. Listen, we already yeah. have. You would have everyone going, oh, it's Mayweather. We should have assumed it was going all 12. Listen, listen, there's UFC that. gyms around the world. There's no such thing as boxing gyms. And that's been there for 10 years. That's been there for 10 years. And it's going to grow if, if fucking Conor McGregor yeah, beats the You're still of the mindset that's versus. That's you know MMA versus boxing. Listen, hold on. I'm hold on. Good. I'm good. I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm with not you. good, though. I'm, I'm not, not good. good. Let me finish my thought. Let me finish my thought. You, you and other people still think it's versus. That's MMA versus boxing. It's never been that. They're two different sports. They can coexist. For for the fans of yeah, either fans sport, not, hold, on, hold on, let me finish. You. For the fans of either sport to think that it's a versus thing is ridiculous. Is it is it basketball versus football? No. Matthew. You never hear fans say that. Matthew, can you understand that their fandoms will always think that? And it's wrong. It's not true. That's what I'm saying. You know how many things are wrong in this world and they still exist? This guy is no, 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 I'm fucking saying it's crazy. not true. I'm not right. saying it's, Bro, it's and real. You know what? And you I'm know saying what? it's not true. It's a fabrication. And you know what? You it's are the same mind. It's a imaginative argument. You are the same guy that said this fight wouldn't fucking happen. 
You said, oh, Dana wouldn't let it happen. It's never going to happen. I never said Dana wouldn't let it happen. We don't know anything about it. Here, here we are again, buddy. Don't you worry about it. Come August 26th, you'll be eating some fucking crow. How? How would I eat some crow? <laughs> How? No, 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 no. no. You don't know on that day that the sport is hurt by this event. You can't. So get the fuck out of here. Come on, man. You're acting like you are this a fucking prophet of the sport that you know, oh my God, this it's so bad if this happens. What are you talking about? The sport's been through worse. It survived. Get over it. Bo There's, there was news articles in, in 1910 saying that boxing's dead. In 1910. That's over 100 years ago. So the, the, people like you have been saying the sport's dying and it's dead for over 100 years and still here. My logic is simple. You get into a fight with a guy that's not in your sport and you're submissive about all the rules. One guy has all the advantages. He's been doing it for 40 years. He's accustomed to the rules that he's been uh, that he's going to go into this fight with. So we expect him to do what he should do. Right? Or what he's been doing. That's your logic. What he's been doing. But then you got to factor in that Connor doesn't have the resume of any of other of, of, of Mayweather's other opponents. So right there, there's just a difference, Matt. And you don't want to believe it, but that's fine. Let's just continue. I, hey, was not my prediction that Mayweather's going to get a finish in round seven? That was my prediction. I've been saying it since the beginning that this fight's been announced. Just saying. But so I, I, I can also be realistic and not care if it goes all 12 because that's what I assume of Mayweather. No, well, we have to care. We have to care. I don't. It, it would be a I black eye on no, Mayweather. On Mayweather, maybe, but not the sport. Four zero seven in Florida. First time caller. Nah, nah, this is um, nah. I've been calling me. Who does Majid? Yeah. Oh man, oh, so shit. it's my bad. I forgot I had two phones. <laughs> my bad. I was about to say, Matt dropped yeah, the ball. Yeah, <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, I think that that sparring session that happened is just fucking with people's heads because it's just a picture, so we can make whatever we want out of it, you know. And I'm like, I told one of my friends about it, and he said, "Well, do you think that if Conor McGregor really beat his ass, that he would put it up there, you know?" And I'm just was thinking like. I don't know. I don't really think it means nothing, you know, because we can make a lot if we actually saw the sparring session, like established, like if Paulie was able to establish a good jab, easy, how Conor McGregor act to it, what he doing, everything. So I feel like that picture just fucked with our head, and it don't mean shit. Well, so Majid, thanks for calling in. I, I will agree with him uh, on that. It is fucking with our head. It's It's doing what it needs to do, which is Stir up the internet. Get us talking, get us thinking. I absolutely agree with that. I think it's uh -oh. great, great promoting by McGregor, in a sense. Yeah, why Why are we just getting to Bobby Arum when you know he's a ringer? You're gonna get uh, I definitely sent you in the chat. Bobby, yeah. I think that, um, yeah, Good but you chat. you brought KM, KM Star on. You don't have to be honest. I, we got into an argument, and I yeah, totally yeah, forgot. Take the, blame. I, take the blame. Take the blame. Stop but trying. It's still I'm in the chat, though. Blame. I mean, you could have read it. You could have read at any point. Trying to push the blame off. Popping all this champagne, popping all this rose, getting money like Jose, chain cold, Norway, shorty wants that full play. I'm like, no way, got a rock like cold play, chilling in. Yo, boy, what's going on, man? What's going on? I have to agree with the what's going on, boys. I have to agree with the callers from like you know, maybe a, a, a bit half an hour ago, man. We're uh. Paulie Malinaji is an employee. He's brought in as an employee. He's there to serve a job, and he's definitely got non-disclosures and things that he's had to sign, man. What if he would have knocked down uh, McGregor or knocked him out? Paulie opening up his mouth could kill the whole promotion, right? So, so of course he does, and, and he's brought in there to, to, you know, to accomplish a specific role that they need him to do. Now, I don't think Paulie Malinaji getting knocked out cold by by conor mcgregor changes the fact that we all think that paulie's a subpar opponent compared to floyd and 
And here's one other thing, man. I, I'm tired of everybody giving so much credit to Paulie that he's this master boxing mind that he's he's like basically the second coming, man. And and in essence, he's the poor man's Roy Jones, man. Roy Jones <gasps> is way more about boxing than Paulie ever will. And here's some other thing. If Paulie's such an amazing trainer, which I saw personally at one of the fights that he was in the corner of this fighter, talking to him, coaching him, in camp with him, and this guy got fucking starched. What about Saddam Ali, man? That's Paulie's boy. And Saddam Ali got starched by, by Vargas, man. So are you tell me that Paulie's like the <gasps> player, that he's going to be like the next Freddie Roach, man? You guys got to understand, man. It's, you know, trainers are trainers, fighters are fighters. Does Paulie know about the sport? Yeah, but doesn't mean he's going to be a great trainer, man. I don't think he brings much to the table for uh, Conor McGregor outside of, of perhaps, you know, MMA fans thinking that uh, Conor's actually training with, with a top-tier uh, boxer, right? If they knew the truth, that Pauly lost every great opportunity he had in the ring, man. Pauly never won a big fight. Please tell me why you are. Yo, that's disrespectful. Pauly you know, won a, maybe, maybe absolutely won a big fight. Pauly did the unthinkable when the odds were against him. He went to the United Kingdom and beat Sinchenko by stoppage when the world already was yeah, convinced. He did, but he lost, no, no. When the world was already the convinced that he, he wasn't. No, no, no. When the world was already convinced that he had no power and he had already lost to Kodo and Khan. He still went and won another title on not, foreign country. You I'm know, not saying that, that, I'm not saying that Paulie didn't have a great career, but he was never top tier, man. He was never elite. How was, how was, how are you never that, elite? Right? And, and, Wait a minute. How are you never elite yet you only fight the elite? Check his resume. But yeah, but but Ness, Paulie's Paulie's always. yeah, but his Gabe soft Rizzotto. fights are like Cano. Gabe, Gabe Rizzotto fought elite. But but you know what? Uh, Gabe Rosado always fought elite, but he never beat them. You know, I mean, I'm saying Paulie's better than than Rosado, but I mean, keep it real, man. He never won a, a, a like you know a must win fight, and the one he did win was against somebody that you know, you know who the fuck is that guy? As you guys say, right? Like Shinchenko sounds more like a a Ukrainian soccer player than a boxer, man. <laughs> so I mean, uh, I. I, I don't know. I know you guys You guys love Paulie down there. Paulie's a great guy, man. He's good for fans. He's good on TV. But let's pump the brakes a bit on Paulie, man. If, if he's the savior for McGregor, McGregor's in trouble, man. Man, they're ripping and, and you, you in the what? chat. I agree with Maddie, man. That's they're true. ripping you in the chat. They, 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 you know what? They're saying you don't know what you're talking about. Of course, because they don't, they don't want to admit the truth. I mean, he I did beat Rocky true. Martinez back in the day. He did beat, obviously, Zab Judah, Edna Cherry. Those weren't bad, bad wins. Come on. Those aren't bad wins, but they're not. He never beat. He Kodo beat Love Nor and Adu, like too. Any of the big, big names. Yeah. Cano. There's a exactly. lot of guys Paul has been in there. Point more and more, man. Yo, you wouldn't be able I'm to beat none of those happened. guys. Never... <laughs> you know what? And I wouldn't, but at least, uh, you know, I wouldn't think that I would be the, the reason McGregor would win, man. But yeah, anyway, but but this is the thing. No, 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 no. You can't digress because guys like Derek James, Freddie Roach, Fuck it. Anyway, name me one boxing trainer with a great resume, except for Floyd Mayweather Sr., who it's questionable to use the word great. And Good let's be honest, Paulie's a much better commentator than Roy Jones. That's what I'm telling you. That's, and hell yeah, Paulie's a better commentator than Roy Jones. Paulie can actually articulate what's Paulie's happening not, in the ring. Paulie's not up there like, oh, you see no. that, son? He's not getting up, Jim. <laughs> I love Roy, though. I keep it real. No, let's be honest. Paulie beat Broner. I think Roy is better, man. Far better. And, well, and listen, Jose. But, I mean, at the end of the day, yo, but just let me just say this one thing. Like, that's my point. Like, uh, Freddie Roach, all these other trainers, they're trainers, man. They excelled in their career as trainers, not as boxers. Sometimes, you know, if you don't have that. But that, you're uh, proving my point, you Jose. You're test, proving our point. They're bringing why? him in for why his is? boxing mind. And you're trying to say, oh, he doesn't have a boxing mind because look at his career. And I'm trying to say, all right, well, most – Every you know, trainer doesn't have I'm a good career. It would be better for him. It was to, Hunter's career? It'd be better for him to bring in a top tier trainer than than, than a boxer who's already passed his time. You know, you're you insane. Do, you're insane, do, man. You're not making any sense, uh, bro. If Paulie became a trainer today, he's got no. a better resume as a fighter trainer than any other fighter trainer out there. Don't you get yeah. it? He yeah. said that he liked Roy Jones over Paulie as a commentator. Like, obviously, he's trolling. Come on. 
Anyway, we got to go. Hit your boomerang button. Hit your boomerang button. You got your three minutes. No one has ever said that Roy Jones is a better commentator than Paulie. Come on. That's a first in history. Listen, let's get to some more alumni. We got a lot of alumni out there. Mr. Info Joe. This portion of the show we call in the presented by my brother. Yo, yo, yo. All my hardcore boxing fans, stand the fuck up. Matt, you my West Coast L.A. homeboy forever, but I got to bang on your ass, man. What the fuck you talking about? He don't need a knockout. What happened to James Tony when he went to MMA? You expected him to get fucking knocked out. If Mayweather went no, to MMA, I would expected him to get knocked out. The same with him, with, with a guy. Imagine this, they're going to be saying, a guy making this professional debut against the best of this era, and he don't get the fucking knockout, it's a black yeah. game. Joe, let, let me ask you a quick question. Preach. Bro, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a quick question just to clarify your point. I want to understand your point. Are you saying that Mayweather needs a knockout for himself or for boxing? Both. For boxing, I, I disagree. I disagree. If he doesn't for, get it, for Black both. guy. For if, himself, hey, he doesn't Joe, get a knockout. Joe, you got the book. You got the book, Ali Anoki. Number you, two. You have the whole book that talks about that fight. Yes, but, but 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 like Ness said, those were not boxing. If it was, it didn't boxing, matter because people expected a knockout out in the fucking first round, huh? People expected a knockout in that situation. This is much. Matt, you're it's losing, Matt. You're talking apples and oranges <laughs> because they were doing like a mixed combat. And that's what you're talking about, Joe. You're talking about a sideshow fight, Joe. Joe. This is a boxing match with boxing rules. It's a sideshow. It's a fucking sideshow, people. You're a, hater. You're a hater. You're such a Floyd fan that you have bought into it so much that you think this is a fight. It's You're a such a Floyd show. fan. You don't want to say he's got to get the knockout because you know it's going to ruin his side life. Show. It's a fucking sideshow. It would be a moral victory. It would be like McConnell McGregor won if Mayweather wins but doesn't get the knockout. It would look that bad. This guy is fucking supposed to be the best. I never say the best ever because Ali holds that crown. But he is the best of this era. And to be the best of this era and you can't knock out a fucking guy that never had a fucking fight before under the big lights and doing uh, boxing. In front of the world? Man, it's, it look bad. And, and it's your rules. Hey, hey, Joe. And you know what they're going to be saying about the water coolers? Yo, he went to Floyd Sport. What? He went to Floyd Sport. Yeah, no, he's used to he used to fights in four ounce gloves, but he had Floyd's rules and Floyd's gloves, and he still couldn't do it. Come on, man, stop acting like we right. lying, exactly. man. Exactly, exactly. Just that's just like when the, Michael. Yo, Jordan, the next you know, conversation, Joe. When, this, when, hold on. When, when Mayweather goes all twelve, and. It has no effect on boxing. It has no effect on viewership. It has no effect on pay-per-view. It has no effect on attendance. I will sit here and tell all of you, I told you so. Listen, Mayweather... You're going to have me... fucking MMA fans calling in the fucking boxing voice talking much shit. Hell yeah. The lines won't even work. This is the the second over, MMA fans will go away. Because for some reason, boxing fans will never like MMA usually. And MMA fans will never like boxing. For some reason, you people think there's this huge f battle between the two sports. I don't get it. I, I truly just don't understand it. As a person that loves both sports, I will never understand how it's always this battle for for supremacy. One has to be the, uh, the be better than the other. And Yo, Connor's that. calling it a half a fight. I've never understood Connor's that. Connor's calling it a half a fight. He's disrespecting our sport. He's saying this ain't even fighting. Oh, my God. He's disrespecting <laughs> the sport. Oh, oh my God. God. Grab if Floyd juice. doesn't knock him out, he's proving Connor right. Don't you get it? I just don't care. I, I'm i sorry. You're the wrong guy to talk to. Info Joe, wrap it up. This guy, he's dead set on being uh, the heel of the show. It's my opinion. It's my opinion. I'm sorry. Hey, man, it'd be a black eye in the game, man. Trust me, Matt. Uh, I know you like both. I respect MMA. Don't get me fucking wrong. And I respect Mayweather to get fucking knocked out in an MMA fight. But this is boxing, and I'm a hardcore boxing fan. And if he can't knock this guy out, it's a black eye in the game. 
Uh, it's all about, that's my call. Peace, brothers. All right, Info Joe, thank you for calling in because it ain't no show without Info Joe. We're going out to the 951. Matt, you sure that's not compa? Uh, no, it's not compa. 951, first time caller? Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to go ahead and play this first time caller intro. You let the world know your name and where you're calling from. Ladies and gentlemen, making his professional debut. Garrett Chisholm from Corona, California. Garrett, what's going on, brother? All right. Uh, yeah, I just, just want to lay in real quick and let you guys know, like, you got to think about Conor McGregor as a, a martial arts master, right? Somebody who has mastered his craft. Now he's going up against a professional boxer. Now think about it like this. You have somebody who is a karate master, right? Take away Conor McGregor. Just somebody who's a karate master, black belt. Now you put him up against a professional boxer. Now this is somebody who is a master at distance, a master at in and out counter striking. You honestly believe that he will not have a chance against a boxer, even if you take away his kicks. He will, he's a master at distance, timing, counter striking. It's just, just the way it goes. He's a master at striking. So as a professional boxer, you have to allow him to have that chance. But um, That's awesome. <laughs> our argument um, is a little deeper than that. We feel like... And very quickly, very quickly before you get we, It's not we. It's more me and some of the listeners. But go ahead, Matt. Uh, karate does not teach really punch, punching at all, like punching combinations, um, how to parry shots, how, how to slip a shot, uh, ideas of the center line. Um, no, they are not transferable. I'm sorry. Um, you can say they have a puncher's chance, but then again, sure, everyone has a puncher's chance in, in this sport. That's not saying much, though. It does teach counter striking. It does teach slipping, counter striking, in and out striking, straightforward attacks. It does. You, t you take a black belt karate, a master karate, and you put him in there with a world champion boxer, he's going to get knocked out every time. Matt, you're crazy, man. If this were Bruce yeah, Lee, would you be saying that if that was Bruce Lee? Yeah, we were talking about Bruce Lee, and I would also say that about Bruce Lee as well. Crazy as hell. Bruce Lee has oh, some of the illest strikes. Boxing. Yeah, but Bruce Lee isn't a boxer. Bruce Lee could have boxed, though. Yeah, they're different sports. So, yeah, and that's my yeah. point, Matt. If they're, so, if they're such different sports, Floyd should get the fucking knockout. But anyway, listen, man, I want to thank you for calling in. We're going to go out to our last caller on Skype. First time caller for sure, I think. Suki, you called in before? Where are you calling in from? First time caller? Sorry. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. I rang you after the money pack you fight. All right. A few weeks back. Yeah, so second time, brother. Yeah, um, just going on about this Paulie Malinagy picture, man. I mean, come on, man. It's straight up bullshit, isn't it? I'm getting pictures from my MMA mates showing up a blow up of his bruised eye and seeing Paulie's getting whacked around in the gym come on Paul is a good fighter yeah? he was never an elite fighter number one number two he ain't fighting no more he got bashed up by Eggington early this year is he been is he been in the ring in the in the gym training he's been commentating so the man he gets a call he goes the next day down there to with McGregor probably straight from his flight and so what if he gets clamped I mean, shit. You know, they Mayweather is going to clown McGregor for 12 rounds solid. That's what I like to see. Just clown him for 12 rounds. I love seeing him knock him out. Can't see that happening, bro. Even if he clowns him for 12 rounds and embarrasses him for the sake of boxing, Mayweather got to do that. Well, all right, Suki, man. I can't believe that we've come where we are that it's okay for a novice to get in there with the best in the world. I mean, Mayweather has programmed us to say that he's the best ever. And even though he's the best ever, to expect to expect we expect the least of him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are just brainwashed. He's already charging you 100. Demand this motherfucking knockout, bro. Let's do a, a three million man march if you don't get it. And run up down on, on the big boy mansion and, and turn it upside down because 
He's got to get a knockout. And if Con- because if Connor wins, oh my God, could you imagine? That's not gonna happen. Can you imagine? What if this is Floyd's first robbery, right? The first time they robbed Floyd. <laughs> first time ever. He's going to change his name to the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, my final thoughts are this. It's, it's not going to change. I think Mayweather is greatness. I think he is one of the best ever. I think probably too highly of Mayweather. I know other guys that'll call in here and say names like Leonard and Ray Robinson and yada, yada, yada. And I would still say Mayweather until I turn blue. That being said, I'm expecting him to get a knockout on this dude that no one's ever fucking heard of. Okay? Well, that's well, I'm a true. boxing fan. And in the boxing world, we don't know who McGregor is. Who the fuck is that guy? Floyd <laughs> should treat him as such. Whenever Danny Garcia got in there with someone we never heard of, he was ridiculed. He had to get the knockout. Any boxer, for that matter, had to get the knockout when they were in there with a tune-up. No one was happy that Khan got put down by uh, Julio Diaz in his tune-up because we weren't expecting that, and we shouldn't expect a a 50-50 fight in this fight. It's not 50-50. The pedigree isn't the same. The experience isn't the same. And the rules are at a disadvantage for Conor McGregor. He's used to delivering kicks, elbows, backhands, jumping punches. He can't do none of that. You know what I'm saying? He can't do none of that. So it's just like he's calling it a half a fight because it is a half a fight to him. And I take that as a sign of disrespect. He's saying that it's a much tougher event to be in a bo- in, a, in, a, in, a, in an MMA in an MMA fight. So, if your opponent is telling you that, you should be knocking him out. You should be knocking him out. He thinks it's a walking apart. You know, that's my final thoughts. Find me on Instagram at nessgto on Instagram and Twitter. My final thoughts are that uh, just like all those other tune-ups, all those other showcases that you mentioned, like Danny Garcia versus Rod Salka, for example, it never affected the sport of boxing if they didn't get that knockout. It may affect them. It may affect their branding, what the public thinks of them individually, but it's never affected the sport of boxing. So why would this tune-up or showcase or whatever you want to call it why would this one now affect the entire sport of boxing? Just interesting. I, 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 it'd be the first time ever a tune-up going all twelve affects the entire sport. It'd be a precedent-setting event, and it already is that. So maybe, maybe I'm underestimating the effect this fight it has on either sport. But I'm sorry, that's my opinion. I think this is a sideshow. Um, I'm hyped. I, I. Can't wait to see it, but I'm also not thinking that this has any bearing on the merits and the greatness of boxing or MMA. No, it's just a sideshow. Can't wait to see it. I love this photo. It got me hyped even more because you know me. I'm, I'm a huge polymelanology fan. So uh, it, it got me It got me sold it's just a little bit more, you know? So I uh, can't wait to see it. Obviously, I'm Matt Tipster Hunter, co-host and producer. You can find me at Mixed Combat News on Twitter, uh, Matt Hunter TV on Instagram, and uh, my MMA podcast, Mixed Combat Radios on Patreon, SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, etc. Go to patreon.com forward slash the boxing voice to get tons of extra shows, extra content uh, for a very, very low price of only $3 a month. So, peace. See you later. Don't forget to follow that hashtag, Border Wars, so you can check out what Border Wars is all about. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel because uh, we will be doing more shows and you want to get that notification whenever we do go live. Peace.